anybody out there? Just not if you can hear me. Is there anybody saved? Anybody saved on that crowd? Anybody out in that crowd? In the unlikely event that anyone here at a wa Roger Waters, Pink Floyd, The Wall concert claims to be a Christian. Anyone out in that crowd claim to be a born-again Christian? Anyone by show of hands? Anyone? Viewer? No, okay, I've come to the right place. I would have assumed that no hands would go up. At least you guys, at least you wicked Pink Floyd fans are honest. Even though you love this wicked and perverted music, and you love your drunkenness and your fornication and your acid, at least you're honest. And you did not claim to be a Christian when asked. So I've come to the right place. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and return to the Lord for he is rich in mercy and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Who's ready to do that? You? Are you ready? Are you ready to turn from your sin, trust in Christ? You're already a Christian. Are you going into this concert? Oh, come on. Nonsense. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 8 to 11, walk as children of the light, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. I'm out here exposing the works of darkness. You're taking part in it. You're taking pleasure in it. The Bible says, do not be a friend of the world or anything in the world. For if anyone is a friend of the world, then the love of the Father is not in them. For all the things of the world, the cravings of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the boasting of what we have and do, that doesn't come from God, that comes from the world. And this world and all of its pleasures and lusts, it's all passing away. But he who does the will of the Father endures forever. So who's ready? Who's ready to rip up their ticket? Rip up your ticket. Walk away from this nonsense and get right with God today. He makes the rules. His kingdom, his rules, and his rules are will you turn? Will you trust in Christ? Are you going to turn? Are you going to turn from your sin, sir? Are you a Christian? Yes. You're born. You're born again Christian. No. Okay. Then you need to turn. No. Uh, you don't yeah, have to be born again. I'm oh born yes, again. most certainly. Jesus said. Jesus said, "I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Nor is there salvation in any other. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved." So who is ready? I didn't say you were. Your sign says it. Your sign says we are. Well, if you are. If I you're an atheist. An uh, well, then you're on your way to hell. You need to get right with God. Get right with God today before but it's I'm too an atheist, late. I'm but I'm a, I'm a charity giver. I'm a nurse. Uh, the Bible says... I'm a says, daughter. I'm a, I'm a... None of that'll mean that, anything. No, does none that of that'll mean... mean I'm just going to burn and yes. hell? Uh, the book of Isaiah says all of our righteous acts are as filthy rags before God. What else? The Bible so, say. Uh, it says the Bible a lot says, of things. Read it. Go home and dust it off and read it. Here, here's a, here's a card for you. No, I don't want uh, the Bible says that all of our righteous acts are as filthy rags before God. We're <laughs> making everybody feel filthy. Uh, no, that's uh, this is wickedness. I never got to thank you last time. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. oh, right. uh, buddy. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never got to thank you. I was looking around for you. I couldn't find you and then the other police officer. Yeah, so I appreciate your help last time. All righty here. So we had we had a good question from an atheist. Uh, good question. We love, we, we're more than happy to take questions. I love questions from atheists. Actually, atheists, atheists are good. They're good seekers. Uh, very, they act very logical. Good questions. I'm being serious. Uh, but we had a good question from an atheist lady who said, Oh, I do a lot of charity work, so I don't need to believe in God. I do a lot of charity work, so why, why would God put me into hell if I do a lot of charity work? I'm a good person. Well, the book of Isaiah says that all of our righteous acts are as filthy rags before God. 
So if that atheist thinks thinks that she can do good works, and she knows she must know that there's a God, otherwise I don't know why she would ask that question. But if you think that you can do good works and get into God's kingdom, you are just going to put a big pile of filthy rags at God's feet, and He will burn you, burn the rags up, and you will be next. You will be burned up next along with those filthy rags that you put at God's feet. Those are your good works. But there is one way. There is one way that you can be right with God. And that is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Who's ready? You know, in the days of Jonah in Nineveh, in Nineveh when Jonah went around and preached for just three days, 120,000 people were saved. Yes. So there's probably, what, 20, 25,000 people that can go into this concert. We will match Jonas, but who's ready? Who's ready? Are we going to have mass repentance out here? The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Which category are you in? Are you the just or the unjust? I would say if you're going into this wicked nonsense, you are not right with God. Your heart is not right with God. The Bible says walk as children of the light, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That's what we're to do. That is what we're to do. And in the last day will come mockers and scoffers, in the last day will come mockers and scoffers. And what does the Bible say? You have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do. So intolerant. So intolerant. You need to go to a gay pride festival if you're going to be that intolerant. That's where you find the most intolerance. You would think I was at a gay pride festival with the level of intolerance the crowd is, is spewing. And if you want to tell me that Jesus Christ is number one, uh, don't do it with the middle finger. You're supposed to use your index finger. Yes, Jesus is number one. Thank you. But it's, it's customary to use your index finger, not the middle one. So Peter told the crowd of mockers and scoffers, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it's strange you not plunge with them into the same flood of sin, and they heap abuse on us, but they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So when Jesus Christ returns, how is he coming back, folks? When Jesus Christ came the first time, He came as a cute little baby. Cute little baby in a manger. He was a cute, sweet little baby in a manger saying, Goo Goo. And then He grew up and led a perfect and sinless life. And then He died on a cross as an atonement for the sins that you committed and that I committed. And then... He rose again on the third day, proving in fact that He was God. So that, in a nutshell, was Jesus' first trip to earth. Oh, but when Jesus returns, Jesus is coming back, and let me tell you something, He ain't happy. He is not happy. And when He returns, the Bible tells us He's not coming back as a cute little baby to say, Goo Goo, I'm going to die for you. No. Jesus already came back as a baby. He already came as a humble servant. I'm not going to knock you if you're going to this concert. You rip up your ticket and I'll give you some knock. You rip up your ticket and I'll give you high fives and whatever else you want. Oh, but when Jesus Christ returns, the Bible tells us, since some of you will experience this, if you will not turn from your sin and trust in Christ, I'm, it's 2 Thessalonians. In the unlikely event that Pink Floyd fans have a Bible with them, if you will open it, your Bible up to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, where it says that the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. And God does love all of His creation, but His forgiveness is conditional. Well, I come to the right place. You're the second person in 30 seconds who's proud to be a child of the devil. Proud to be a child of the devil. So I have come to the right place. I have come to the right place where people want to have bad religion t-shirts. I've got, I've got a little pin that says no porn. You've got a shirt that it says no Jesus, no cross. There's the fruit of Pink Floyd. There it is. Show us that shirt, sir. There's the fruit. Hold on, hold on. I got a mocker in my way. Hold on. Somebody, we got a camera hog in the way. Somebody really wants to hear the words of God. So where's, where's my friend with his no uh, bad religion? Where's my friend with his bad religion t-shirt? Let's get a shot of the fruit. Where are you? Where's my bad religion friend? Hey, bad religion. Bad religion t-shirt. Let's get a shot of that shirt. There it is, the fruit, the fruit of Pink Floyd, atheism, drug use, drunkenness, immodestly dressed women, potty mouths, people flipping me off, telling me shut the F up. This is the fruit, this is the fruit of Pink Floyd, this is the fruit of Roger Waters. This is the fruit of wicked music like the wall. Potty mouths, immodest women, drunkenness, drug abuse, half the crowd walking around dazed and confused, comfortably numb. Look at that, you guys comfortably numb already? Too many people comfortably numb when they should be sober-minded. That's what the Bible commands you to be, sober-minded. Sober-minded.